Hello everyone. So I've got another pin video here that um, I'm pretty excited to share with all of you. Now, um, I wanted to do, I, I didn't do a top 10 fountain pen video last year. I did do a top 10 Chinese fountain pens. I think it was uh, 2018 when I put that video out. That was a very popular video. A um, little bit, uh, for, for a lot of agreeing, a lot of disagreeing. And that's one of the great things about uh, collecting fountain pens and being in the community in the world that we're in is everybody's going to have their own opinions. Now, of course, since that time, we have had tons of new pens that have been launched. Now, this is going to be my personal top 10 Chinese fountain pens for 2020. Now, a couple of things with that. It doesn't mean that I bought these pens in 2020. It just means that they're still either my in my top 10 or um, I bought them this year and they made the list. Now, when talking about um, something like this, a video like this, it's really difficult to choose a top 10 list. One thing that I challenge all of you to do is down in the comment section, list your top three or your top five or even your top 10 fountain pens or Chinese fountain pens. Let all of us know what you like the most. Some of you may be surprised by this list and obviously some of you will disagree. I do have some honorable mentions because again, it's very hard to do this. Some of my top two or three may surprise you. Um, all of these pins that I'm reviewing, I'm not going to do a writing sample for. So if you want to see a writing sample, I will either link a video in the description because I've either I have reviewed all of these pins and you can always go and skip to the end of the video and watch the writing sample or watch the review if you've never seen the pin before. Now, in addition to that, how do I decide 10 through 1 or 1 through 10? Well, there's a few factors. Um, using just a simple rating scale that I would typically use when rating the pens in any independent review, talking about or thinking about the aesthetics of the pen first and foremost. So how do I feel the pen looks in person? What type of material does it have? Do, do, I, do I like the look of the pen? The other aspect is writing experience. At the end of the day, it is a tool. It is a utensil, a writing utensil. So it has to be able to do its job. It has to be consistent with its job. So that's another aspect for me. And then the wow experience. That is, again, something that's very important. Uh, I think when you collect fountain pens, you know, it has to write well, it has to have really good aesthetics, but it also has to make you feel a certain way when you use it. Um, that's why a lot of us collect fountain pens. So it has to wow you. And then of course the overall experience of the pen, all three of those things combined into one, it kind of helps me get this list. Now, as far as putting thought into it, again, it's kind of hard. I, I sat there, I kept putting my pins in a row, and then I would take pins out, I'd put pins in. It was really tough making this list. And honestly, I don't know if I'm still 100% sold if this is truly my top 10 list. Um, I'm pretty sure that the top three or four or even five pins are pretty much pretty consistent, but that back half especially was hard because I felt bad even leaving some of the pins out. Now I'm going to turn the camera around. We'll get this started. I am going to start with the honorable mention pins first. These are pins that are amazing pins in their own right. They just barely missed the list. And, and I'll maybe talk a little bit as to why. Again, no writing samples. Uh, help speed up the video. I will talk vaguely about the price of the pins. I'm not going to go into in-depth detail, but just to give you an idea, maybe this will help steer you in a direction if you're trying to think about a, a Chinese pin to purchase, for instance. See you in a moment. All right, so let's get this video rolling. So again, I want to start with some of my honorable mention pins first. And this, this is what makes the video hard, is really trying to truly decide what should be in the top 10 list. Now, I could sit here and talk probably about 20 different honorable mentions, but these are pins that I think are, are really close to being in the top 10. And honestly, if I was doing this video tomorrow, they might be in the top 10. The first one that I have, these are great pins, but the Fully One, Fully One 017 Fountain Pen. These are, I think, a work of art pen, beautiful resin material. It really gives you a basically a handmade look and feel. 
Um, you know, these pins I did get with that snake clip. They did come with that. Um, the nib that comes with these pins writes very well. Now this one, I put a Goulet pins nib in it. The other one, if I'm not mistaken, I could be lying as the full on nib, um, but they're very versatile. Um, and this is actually a nib that came with this one. Uh, the, this is a, a nib that I got from uh, Bobby pins and he actually sent it with this pin. And I really like this nib. That's the reason why it's in there, but the nib that it comes with as well, really works very well. This is a cartridge converter pin. Um, you could eyedropper these pins as well. They are available in a wide range of materials and generally about sub $20. So this is an honorable mention. So great, great pins. Check them out if uh, something that you're interested in. Another one is a pin that very tough to not put it on the list because of its overall versatility is the Jin Hao 51A. Great pin. Um, you can actually get some of these pins sub $5. Uh, this one was a little bit more expensive because it does have a specialty ground nib on it. You can see that upturn on it. Um, gives a little bit different uh, line width and variation depending upon the angle that you hold the pin. Pin that is, you know, based off of the Parker 51 design, beautiful streamlined pin. This one is uh, particularly a cartridge converter. Um, great pin. This pin, if you are a student and you're looking for a solid pin to maybe that's not too expensive, it's a good pin to look at. Um, very easy to use, very versatile, great pin honorable mention pen. Now for our last honorable mention, really any Wingsung 601. Now for those of you that watched my last Chinese pen top 10 video, this was number one. Um, now it's moved into the honorable mentions um, and it's not because this pen is not a great pen. Um, the awesome thing about Wingsung 601s, whether you get the 601 or 601, 601A, you can get these now with the same hooded nib or you can get it with the nib completely exposed. You can get these pens in a variety of filling systems too. That's the other great thing about these pens. And in most cases, they are sub $20. So they're gonna be less than $20 for one of these pens. I have not owned one of these. I've owned four of them now. I gave one away and then I have one that finally gave out on me. They took to work every day for I think close to almost two years. It finally broke. Um, and I put that pin through hell practically, and it works very well. So these are great pins. Again, student, if you're going to work, these are good pins, versatile, very, very nice to use. Now, let's get into our top 10 pins. And this is where it gets tricky, and this is where it gets difficult, in my opinion, because now we got to label them. So for me, coming in at number 10 is a pin BBS fountain pen and that's the pin bbs 323 this is a great pen um the ergonomic design of this pen alone is exceptional um, this is a pen that does not post so that it would be one downside to it but it fits very nicely in the hand um, when you hold this pen for me specifically this little concave area right here in the barrel fits nice in the webbing of my hand it's very comfortable to write with again the one knock is it doesn't post so for those of you that like posting pins this might um, be a pin that you may not enjoy now this uh, pin is a cartridge converter however if you wanted to, you could eyedropper this pin. So you, of course, have this. It has an O-ring right here. It'd be a perfect pin. If you really wanted a lot of ink capacity, eyedropper it. Great pin. Um, I did put a Goulet pins nib on this. Um, and honestly, you could put any pin BBS pin in the top, pin, top 10 list. 323, though, it's pretty versatile. They now have this uh, anodized aluminum. Um, helps I could pronounce that first word. But uh, this gives you, again, another option. Very nice material, kind of has a very nice tactile feel to it. Um, but it gives you this same kind of writing um, feel to it. You'll notice, though, that the threads are at the end. Now, this one, I'd rather like this Pimbius nib. This is one of their medium nibs. Very, very wet rider, very consistent. Cartridge converter pin. Not a pin I would eyedropper, obviously. It does have the same O-ring, the same position, but of course it comes with 
the um, the converter, like all pin BBS pins like this, but it's it's a solid, solid pin. Um, very deserving to be in the top 20. Most pin BBS 323 fountain pins, you're going to get them in the $20 range. You're going to get an exceptional material. Quality control is going to be solid with any pin BBS pin, generally speaking. And I don't think you can go wrong with it. So that's why I put this pen at number 10 because of that fact. This was a pen that when I first bought it, it was the first pin BBS pen I ever bought was this one right here. And again, it has stood the test of time. I can put this pen against any other pen regardless of the price and it stands its own. It's a very, very attractive pen. All right, so the next pin that we have in this list uh, coming in at number nine is the Wingsung 699. Now this is a pen that is available actually now in a wide, wide range of different colors. It has a completely clear option, it has a blue option, it has this kind of smoky quartz look that you see here. Um, and then it has, um, it has a lot of different color options. Uh, now, of course, this pen is kind of uh, manufactured after that of a Pilot um, 823. And it definitely, you know, holds its own against that pen. Um, a solid build quality as most Wingsung Fountain pens. Now, there are some things with this pen that I know... Um, kind of for me bring it a little bit farther back is the nib at times does have some issues with drying out now generally a little bit of a shake and you can get that uh, nib working again but because it's a vac filler it does um, make it a little bit harder to saturate that feed at times now you know vac fillers some people love them some people don't i personally love vac fillers it's a unique i don't say a unique filling system but it's different than a cartridge converter you get a nice solid ink capacity i just think they're kind of fun to use as well um, this is a pin the nib as a whole works well nibs very very similar or identical to that of a wingsung 626 so if you own one of those pins it's going to be the basically the same nib for the most part fits well in the hand has a very nice weight because of that rod that's inside of there one knock is it doesn't really post extremely well you have to push down on it really hard but once you get it there it you know it, it's on there it stays um, fairly well balanced so again solidly made pin you can fully disassemble this pin take the rod out all of those different things to clean it which again is a nice aspect um, I actually find this pin a little bit easier actually to clean at times than my it's uh, pin BBS counterpart. But again, that's just that's just my own personal preference. So sitting at number nine, this pin is around twenty dollars or sometimes a little north of that, depending upon the seller you're purchasing it from. But you have different color variations available. So again, a very very cool pin, very solidly made, sitting at number nine on this list. All right, so coming in at number eight now, we have the Pin BBS 487 Fountain Pen. Now, as you can tell, I still have this pen inked up. It's the first one that I am showing that is currently inked up. Um, and this is a unique fountain pen. I've had this pen now for a while. Um, really, the first part of the year, I received this pen. And I paid about $100 for this pen. So it was kind of like a specialty release. Now you can go to Pen BBS official store and get this pen, um, different c color options, of course, for around $30, sometimes a little north of that. What makes this pen unique though, for those of you that may not know, is it has a magnetic filling system. So that's one thing that's really neat as a magnet back here, as well as a magnet up here. If you want to see how that works, there are reviews on YouTube. You can also watch my review as well and see how the filling system actually performs. Now, this specific model, you know, there's a few things I like about it. Aesthetically, I love the clear look to it, especially when it's full of ink. It just looks really cool. The filling system obviously is, is unique. It's one of the things I love about Pin BBS as well as their materials. They do a lot. They're not afraid to kind of push the envelope on different filling systems. And I think that's what's really neat about them. Now, as far as the nib on this pin, it's a solidly made nib. Now, again, this was kind of a specialty release, but the nib on here writes very well. Kind of a nice medium line. The pin is very comfortable to use. 
is a pin as well that you can post. It doesn't post very deeply, but you can. For my hands, it's a little bit back heavy. Uh, if you have very large hands, this was a pin that would probably fit very comfortable. Um, but for me, it fits perfectly in the hands just like this. Not a heavy pin. There's not a lot of metal in the actual barrel. All the weight is really right here in the cap itself. But again, solidly made pin. You've got your pin BBS traditional feed with those kind of skinny fins. Um, always be careful if you're removing your nib and your feed that you can damage these very easily. Just FYI. I haven't cleaned this pin out yet. So it'll be interesting to see how it is cleaning the pin out. I One of the knocks I would say on the pin possibly is I have heard some people saying that the piston, after a while, as it's seated back here for a long period of time, it can kind of get stuck and be a little bit difficult to move. So that could be an issue, but we'll see what happens when I clean the pin out. Outside of that, aesthetically speaking, gorgeous pin. Riding experience, it, it, mechanically wise, it writes very well. I have had no hard starts with this pin, no drying out issues. It's been consistent. It's basically an eyedropper because of the fact that there's no other mechanical pieces other than that magnet at the end of it. So very solid pin, and I think it's very deserving of the number eight spot in this list. And for some of you, it could even be higher. Check it out on the Pin BBS official store. As I stated before, there's a lot of different colors available on this pin. So if this clear one doesn't speak to you, there's other colors available in different materials. Check it out. It's, I think it's worth getting this pin. All right, coming in at number seven on this list is the pin bbs 355 that's right we're having our third pin bbs pin in the top 10 already um, and this really speaks to pin bbs as a pin manufacturer and how great of a job that they do now this pin is the bulk filler now this is not the new version the 2020 version of the bulk filler this is the one that i got i think Maybe the beginning of last year, end of 2018. So I've had the pen now for quite a while, about a couple years. Um, it is a great pen. Um, I love the filling system. This pen was inked up for a very long time. I have cleaned it out, of course. Uh, it's been sitting for a while, but it will probably be back in my rotation at some point soon. But it is a fabulous pen. I know some of you, some of you love the bulk filler. Some of you do not. I think if you get this pen in the clear version, um, it works very well. It's easier to see that. I know that the newer models, um, they kind of fix some of the issues with the bulk filler. I have actually really, other than when I first used this pen, I've never really had any issues. It was a little bit cumbersome trying to get used to it at first, um, but now there's no issues. I could probably close my eyes and fill it and it would work good other than probably spilling ink all over the place maybe. Um, you know, this pen is offered in a variety of different materials, like all pin BBS pens, you know, and the prices have become somewhat more reasonable. I think when I bought this pen, it was closer to like $60. And of course I was not very bright and waiting, you know, when they first launched it, all of the colors sold out and there was like none available, literally none. And then finally they restocked it and I was able to get this pen and I was so ecstatic when I received it um, about, you know, and, and it's just a great pen. It's a great pen to write with. Um, this pen did come with just a fine nib and that's really my one knock. And for me personally, why I don't, some of the pen BBS pens, I generally will change out the nibs. I just don't care for their fine nibs. It always writes dry. It's always a little scratchy for my liking and I don't care for that upturn as much and so i generally put other nibs in these pens and that's probably again my only criticism of pin bbs whatsoever now if you want to see this pen uh, as far as filling it again you can check my review or anybody else's there's tons of reviews out there on this pen as far as how to fill it and really just the overall writing experience um, this pen has a decent weight to it it fits very comfortably in the hand i love this section um, it's gorgeous when you fill this up full of ink. It just is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I do actually have a Moonman two-tone nib on here right now. I was using this for quite some time writing with it, um, and it worked very well. Um, one thing to note, if you do switch out the nib on here, you've got to really watch. 
the cap in here is actually the the closure here enclosure is actually a little bit more uh narrow and there's not as much space and if you're not careful if you put say a yovo nib in here it generally does not fit very well and as you go to recap the pin you can actually um you can actually mess up your tines pretty bad so watch for that i learned that the hard way and had to get out a nib block and rework one of my steel nibs so that was definitely something that was frustrating but it was my fault great pen um, again prices for this are going to range from probably a little north of 30 dollars, depending upon the material that you get and they have the new filling system now which i still haven't even purchased i need to fork over some money at some point purchase the new filling system and when i do so i promise i'll put out a review on that but Definitely a pen that deserves sitting here at the number seven spot. All right, so coming in at number six on this list, we have the Moonman M300 fountain pen. This is still probably one of my favorite Moonman fountain pens. Now, this pen may come with a bit of controversy because it's actually one of well i don't know it's definitely not the most expensive i've reviewed so far that would go to the pen bbs 487 as far as what i've spent but it's still a pen that's available and it's but it's rather pricey it's going to be in the north of 60 dollar range but what i can say is it is a very attractive material the aesthetic qualities of this pen the material alone take away the metal pieces it is very very attractive for me the re another reason why i like this pen it does come with a schmidt nib i've had my issues with schmidt nibs over the years um i know a lot of chinese pens have used those liy being one moon man over the years and even some other brands but this particular particular nib works very, very well and makes this pen kind of come together for me and makes it worth the money that I spent for it. You know, this pen from a weight characteristic, a girth, a size is very similar in some aspects to that of the Conklin All-American. One of the things that I think makes this pen even better, the Conklin, as beautiful as this brownstone pen is, it doesn't write sometimes worth a darn. The nib that I received with this pen is kind of a dud. Um, and I would choose this pen any day over this one, even though the Conklin pen is a beautiful fountain pen. Now, taking a look at this pen, this resin material again is gorgeous. This pen is inked up. This pen has been inked up off and on almost since the day I got it. I've had the pen now for roughly, well, I th I'd say about two years, give or take. Um, and it's just a good solid pen. It does have a Schmidt fine nib on it, same type of feed, but it works well. It is, um, it is a solid nib. It's probably one of, if not the best Schmidt nib I have personally ever used. Now, of course, it is a cartridge converter foam pen. Um, I've ran a, several different types of ink through this converter and this nib and feed. They've all worked well. The material to me is stunning. I love the material. Again, reason why it's on this list, but also the writing experience. You know, at the end of the day, that's why we collect fountain pens. We want to enjoy the writing experience that it provides us with. And this pen does not fall short there. It's north of $60. That's that would be the one thing I would probably keep it from being higher on the list, but it is a very, very good pin. If you have one of these pins, comment down below what you think about it. Not a, again, not an extremely popular pin. There's not as many reviews on this pin as there are some of these other ones I have on the list, but it's a solid pin. Definitely check it out. It is still available. There are other colors as well, not just this particular one. There are other colors available. So again, check it out. All right, we are now into number five. We're on the top five Chinese fountain pens for me personally of 2020. And I've got the Pen BBS 456 here. This is an uh, awesome pen. You know, I this pen could easily be number one for me. Um, and I have, I do have two of them. I have my clear one that I still use. I 
rinse this out. I'm actually going to put some more ink in it probably as soon as I'm done with this review. As you can tell, I didn't do a great job cleaning it out, but it's going to be re-inked re soon. I love this one. This one is, um, I haven't written with it for a while. This, if I'm mis not mistaken, we still got the Pin BBS Medium Nib. Again, this is my favorite Pin BBS nib that they make. But the 456 is an awesome, awesome pin. Again, another vac filler. Uh, this one, the reason why the 699 is farther down the list is just because the Pin BBS, the overall quality, the fact that it consistently writes. The flow of their pins are solid. They've the way they've made these have, have is just perfect. It's a great pin. You cannot go wrong with a four five six. The pricing for these pins, depending upon the material, is going to be around the thirty to maybe fifty dollar range. Check out Pin BBS official store on the Etsy account. There's also other resources you can go, uh, eBay being one, of course, if you're looking for these pens. But you cannot go wrong with one of these pens. Solid pen. This one, I actually have a um, special nib on it that I absolutely love, and it actually works perfectly with this nib. Um, check out the reviews. I have reviews on both of these pens, writing samples on both of these nibs. So definitely check out the reviews for them. Uh, there's other YouTubers out there, and I, I really think for the vast majority of any of the reviews I've watched on this pen, they're always positive. And I think, again, this is just a very solidly made pen that you cannot go wrong with. And for the price that you pay, you're going to get really good ink capacity, aesthetically a pleasing pen, and the writing experience is going to be exceptional. So, Definitely check out this pin. Very deserving of the top five. It could be higher on this list, honestly. But this is where it sits for me today. Tomorrow, again, might be different. But a great, great pin. All right. We have now made it to number four. And I have here the Jin Hao 100 Centennial Fountain Pen. Now, you may say, why is this pen higher than the Pin BBS 456? Well, today it's higher. And if you watched my review that I loaded maybe a, a couple weeks ago at this point, I gave this pen a rating of out of five out of five overall, a five. I love this pen. You know, one of my favorite things when I first started kind of collecting pens was vintage fountain pens. Some vintage pens I can't afford, um, but I do have a decent collection of vintage pens. I don't do a lot of reviews on them because I mainly do reviews on Chinese fountain pens, and I don't pretend to be an expert, especially when it comes to vintage fountain pens. This pen gives you that vintage vibe, very similar to that of a Wingsung 626 with, with that Schaefer balance design that that pen had. This one, the material is for me what does it. Aesthetically speaking, this pen is gorgeous. I absolutely love this material. I love the fact that the kind of faded, almost yellowish white chips in this pen make it look like it's been sitting, like it's almost telling a story. It's been sitting in someone's drawer for, you know, 40 years and it was waiting to be brought back out to the world to be used as a writing utensil. Not to mention um, the nib that this pen comes with, the Jin Hao nib that it comes with, it writes very well. Um, if you've watched that review already and saw the writing sample, this is a very wet nib. It performs very, very well. Consistent line. It's a great pen. And not to mention, I paid less than $20 for this pen. So what more could you want? This is just an awesome, awesome fountain pen. For less than $20, get one. They are available in a multitude of different colors. So you have, if you don't like this specific color, it doesn't speak to you like it speaks to me, check out some of their other colors, watch my review, watch the right, or at least watch the writing sample to get an idea of how the pen performs as well. Because again, at the end of the day, that's what you get a fountain pen for. It has to write, it has to be consistent. It can't just look pretty. But this pen touches on all aspects. I enjoy using it. I enjoy looking at it. It will be a pen that will probably be inked up in my collection for quite a long time. So definitely check it out. All right. So coming in at number three, 
we have a Moonman fountain pen, and this is the C1 fountain pen. This is an awesome, awesome pen. It's been out, of course, for quite some time. Most of you probably already know about this pen because it has so many reviews. Most, mostly all of those reviews have been super positive about this pen. This pen was inked up for me for a long, long time. It's only not inked up right now because I don't want to have so many pens inked up. So right now it's sitting in a drawer, but trust me, at some point it will come back out and be used again. Why is this pen um, so high on the list? Well, it just looks cool. It has, you know, its own little roll stop. It has its flat part on it. It has a beautifully made section that is kind of like a, a two or almost tritone with the red and the purple. Um, and the nib on this pen is exceptional. It's probably one of the best Moon Man nibs just straight out of the box. It is super just, it, it writes so well. Solid line, solid uh, line consistency. It is a nice wet line. It, it never has issues as far as drying out. You know, depending upon what ink you put in here, you can even make this pen look cooler with a different co different colored ink. Um, you know, you could put a glitter ink in here, whatever you want to do. But of course, you know, any any pen like this that is that you can kind of watch the ink slosh around in there just makes it that much more enjoyable and that much better. You know, this section is very comfortable. This is a pen that is very comfortable to write with. It's not heavy, obviously. Put ink in it, it does add a little bit to the weight. It does not post. That is maybe one knock that you could give for this pen. But this section for me is very comfortable. The nib is a, you know, one of the first uh, Moon Man proprietary nibs that we saw. And it writes so well. I mean, it performs. It does its job the way it's meant to from a writing aspect. But what to me makes this pen look cool is, and I think, you know, I said this in my initial review, is it just kind of looks like a work of art. It, it's very attractive. I love this pen. And uh, it will stay in my collection forever. Um, great pen. If you are on the fence, if you haven't tried one of these pens, the Moon Man C1, get one. I think when I first bought it, I think it was probably closer to $40. Now they're available more closer to $20. They're still available on eBay. I've seen them on Etsy. So you definitely can get one. Now, obviously, the section, depending upon what part of the rod they cut the section from, it's not going to look exactly like mine. But I think that's one of the exciting things about it. You're going to get maybe a different color section. So, again, this is number three on the list. Deservingly so. It could easily, easily be higher. It's a pen that I rather enjoy, and it's a great, great fountain pen. All right, we have number two displayed for, for all of you. This is the Wing Sun 670. Now, for me, this is number two. For most of you, this, this may not even be in your top ten, but there's a reason why this one's number two. If you watch my review that I just released uh, probably last week, this pen has a 14 karat gold Wing Sung nib. It's one of their new nibs, not the old, new old stock nibs that they had. It is a fantastic writer. I love uh, the look of the pen. I love the fact that it's a dual fold style pen. It kind of has the, the old school dual fold color to it. That's one of the reasons why I chose it. But the nib is what makes this pen awesome. Um, I, you know, I rather enjoy this pen. And the more I've written with it the re is the reason why it's higher on this list. When I did my review, I had just inked it up. I had just written with it. And for me, it, it's really a number five. It is a great, great fountain pen. Um, it feels very premium in the hand. It has a nice, nice weight to it. And, um, you know, it's a nice, it's a cartridge converter fountain pen. It, you, this is a pen that you can post because of the design. If you have large hands, it posts uh, deeply. It's secure and it just it works well for me i write with it unposted but again what makes this pen exceptional is the nib it has a unique nib and feed um, if you haven't watched my review go watch the review on this one it's worth watching I, again this is an awesome pen it is worth uh you know it's got to be about ninety dollars if you want to fork over that much cash for some of you be like nope nope too too much for me um, if you're concerned about this nib performing, at least the nib I received, it performs 
flawlessly. It works very well. It does its job. The overall writing experience with this pen is exceptional. I've been writing with it a lot. I rather enjoy it. Um, it's just a great fountain pen. And I, you know, you can't go wrong with this pen. It deserves to be number two for me personally. Now, the Moonman C1 could have easily made this at the number two spot, but because of the nib, this pen is number two. It's an awesome pen. Check it out. All right, here you see number one, and this may come with some controversy. I don't know, but we have the Moonman M800. For those of you that own the pen that this pen mimics, you may not be happy with number one, but this is my video and I love this pen. This pen will probably stay inked up for possibly ever. It is an awesome Chinese fountain pen. Um, now I got this pen with the Bach nib. Now, so I spent a little bit more. This pen was around 50, a little over $50 for me, but you can get it with the Moon Man nib. Um, I do wanna give a shout out to Douglas because he called it when this pen was first released. Um, it was released with only the Bach nibs, and just like they did with the Moonman M600, they came out basically with an M800S and released it with Bach nibs. So you can get this pen cheaper with a Bach nib, or I'm sorry, with a Moonman nib, or you can get it with a Bach nib, and I got mine with the Bach nib. The Just the fit and finish of this pen is awesome. It is a work of art like the C1 fountain pen. I love this material. It's so attractive. Um, beautiful resin material. It's a cartridge converter fountain pen. But one of the other reasons why I love this pen is, of course, I had to put a titanium nib on here. Now, some of you may say, well, that's not the nib you got with it. The Bach nib that this pen, ca Bach nib that this pen came with worked fine. It worked, it wrote well, I had no issues with it whatsoever, but I couldn't help resist adding this titanium nib on here. So that's what makes this pen for me much more exceptional and why I like it. But even if I didn't put that Bach nib on here, maybe it falls back to number three, maybe. Maybe it falls back a little bit farther. Maybe I put the C1 in the number one spot. Maybe I put the Wingsung in the number one spot. But for me personally, this is the pen for me. I love this pen. I enjoy writing with it. I would put it up against a lot of my more expensive fountain pens and I think it could hold its own. And again, this may come with controversy, but that's the reason why we do this. That is my top 10 fountain pens. Comment down below what you think, you know? Tell me what your top three, top five, top 10 fountain pens are. I would love to hear that, you know? I would love to have a debate on what you think. Um, totally fine with that. Um, again, you know, some of these pens may surprise you. There were other pen BBS pens that I thought about putting in this list. I could have had, again, probably 10 to 15 honorable mentions. But for the sake of time and, and everything else, I, I figured I'd stick with these pens. Hope you all enjoyed the video, if nothing else. Um, hope it maybe sparks some ideas in your mind. Maybe gives you some ideas of some pens that you haven't already experienced or tried out yet. With all that being said... I hope all of you have had a fabulous holidays. I know 2020 has been a rough year for all of us. I'm kind of glad it's coming to an end and I'm, I'm really looking forward to 2021. I know it's going to be a much better year. To all of you out there, please stay safe. Take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Take care of your family. And until next time, I will see all of you later. Bye-bye.